right, everyone. Um, I think we'll, we'll go ahead and get started. So I'm Patty Woods. I'm a career advisor in the Lazarus Center for Career Development. And I'm here with my colleague, Jason Bauerclapp from the Lazarus Center. And we're excited to be talking to you today on the topic of writing your first resume and cover letter. Um, and today we're going to be covering some basic practices surrounding what you need to know about these two uh, very important documents. So here are our learning objectives for the presentation today to really understand and learn what the, the purpose of a resume and cover letter is and understand what to put on a resume and cover letter. It's certainly not a confessional of everything you've ever done. And we're going to talk a little bit about what I think is one of the hardest parts of writing a resume, which is talking about your experience in those, in those bullet points. So we'll discuss how to write a bullet point and then, of course, um, answer your questions. Um, are there any other objectives that you would like us to bring up today? Or is there a burning question about a resume, writing a resume or a cover letter that you really hope that we answer today in today's presentation? Um, I am gonna, because there's just a few of you, you can um, either type your question in the chat. If there's a burning question you have about resume writing or cover letter writing, type it in the chat or you could virtually wave to us and we'll, we'll um, call upon you to unmute yourself. Give you a minute to do that. Or if there's a learning objective and you say, I really want to learn about X. So far, I don't see anyone and that's okay. It's great to be here. We appreciate you being here um, just to learn in general. And I'm seeing a, a question come in and the question is, what is the structure of a cover letter? Great, we'll definitely be covering that today. Okay, so, and any other, any other questions that pop up throughout the presentation, just plug them in, but I'm excited that you're thinking about the, the structure. All right, so I'd like to engage all of you right off the bat and hear your guess on how much time on average an employer will spend on your resume when making an initial decision about you as a candidate. So um, go ahead and type in your guess on um, hire, hiring managers spend an average of how much time looking at your resume. Okay, two to three minutes, five to 10 minutes, and two minutes. The answer is seven seconds. Ah, wow, right? Um, so this is according to a study released by The Ladders, an online job matching service. Um, it says uh, recruiters spend an average of seven seconds reviewing your resume. And then if they like what they see, then they move on to your cover letter. So um, I know most of you um, have hidden, I think, your, your, your faces. Um, so does anyone, anyone want to take themselves off of mute to share your thoughts on what this means? Um, so what does this mean for your resume if an employer is only looking at it for seven seconds? Uh, feel free to take yourself off mute and, and let us know what you think this means. What's important about knowing about that? Maybe Anyone? the keywords should um, stand out, like grabs attention immediately. Oh my goodness, absolutely. Great. I echo that completely. So if they're looking at it for seven seconds, they're going to be, it's, it's super important. Um, to hire what's relevant to that particular job. I love that. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I'd also say it needs to be clean and error free for sure. So if they see something that um, is a mistake and they're looking through a number of different resumes, makes it easier for, for them to say, we're going to take this resume out of the stack. I've got a lot of other resumes to go through. So you have little room for error. 
and to highlight what's important for that hiring manager to see in relationship to your skills and the position that you're applying for. So the, the main purpose of a resume um, is, and, and a cover letter, is to help you get an interview. Um, there in, these documents are really intended for you to start conversations with a prospective employer. And submitting a resume and cover letter is really the first step in the hiring process for a job or an internship. Uh, a resume, uh, being that its uh, main purpose is to get you an interview, it's not supposed to be everything you've ever done. Um, it's, um, like I said earlier, not a confessional. It's just um, a piece to get you into an interview so you can discuss a little bit more about your interest in the position. It's, um, it's the who, who are you? And then the cover letter is the why. Why do you want to work at that organization? And a resume is also something that evolves over time. So for better or for worse, you won't be writing a resume and then done. It's, you know, got that accomplished. It's something that you'll be working on and it'll evolve over time. So um, we want to avoid that, um, that uh, moment if an employer or hiring manager is looking at your resume and saying, huh, I don't get it. You know, these are interesting experiences or skills, but I, I'm not seeing why they applied for the position. So um, back to, I think, Marcelina's point, um, it's important to focus your resume on the specific skills. So what should you include on your resume? So this will be different for each individual based on your background and your area of interest. The most popular sections of a resume include contact information, education, work experience, and skills. Other sections of a resume might include any of the following, but not all of, it, all of them because that would be just too much uh, information on one page and mostly and most likely not needed for any one job. So let's begin with the section on your resume that everyone will have. And it's standard to have, um, so this is your contact information section, which would be the top of your resume. It's pretty standard to have your name in a font size slightly larger than what you would have for the remainder of your document, just for your name to stand out. Um, your email address, Typically stick with one email address to make it really easy for the employer to know how to contact you. And one phone number, uh, again, to make it really easy for the employer to know which number to call. And optional sec sections include um, the mailing address we're actually seeing less and less of um, the actual you know, box number or number of the street address. So you might have your name, email, phone number, and then just the city and state, so Northampton, Massachusetts, and the zip code, but not, you know, 55 Pleasant Street, Northampton, Mass. Just not needed anymore because most of the time we're not getting snail mail. We also encourage you, if you have one, a LinkedIn URL to put up in your contact information section. Uh, usually people in maybe their junior or senior year will have started working on a LinkedIn profile so you could put up your, your URL. And then for those of you who are in the arts or engineering or have some sort of blog or online website, feel free to put your, um, your website uh, address in your contact information if that's something that you want to highlight in relationship to the position you're applying for. And after this section, I'll pause and see what questions we have so far. So the next section is education section. And we recommend all undergraduates and recent graduates of Smith to have this section right after your contact information as a way of highlighting your most recent accomplishments as a Smith student. Um, so, as you'll notice here, this person has decided to include their GPA, 
You don't need to, but if it's over a 3 -0, you know, feel free to include it. If you would like to highlight any honors, you may do so here in um, an honors section or just as part of your Smith College overall entry. And relevant coursework, absolutely. If you've taken a relevant course or a few in relationship to the position you're applying to, go ahead and highlight that. Um, this individual did a study abroad and absolutely employers love to see study abroad experience. So they put that entry in here. If you are a first year or sophomore, you can absolutely have this second um, educational entry be your high school experience. And again, should you choose to um, include a uh, SAT score or some honor in high school, that's absolutely a great place to put this, to put that in. So I just uh, kind of briefly went over the contact information section and education sections. Any, any questions so far? Okay, is it necessary to include your previous college as a transfer student? I love this question because I was a transfer student. Um, so I, I was I always go back and forth with this myself. So there's no right or wrong. You can absolutely include that other college. So the first experience would be Smith. Um, it, within each section, you want to do reverse chronological order. So within each section, put the school that you're attending most recently first. And then you can absolutely put the community college or the school that you transferred from, especially if what's to follow on your resume in your experience section. You might have um, a club that you were involved in, in at that school. Maybe you were in a leadership position at that school, or there might be relevant courses that you took at that school that you want to highlight to your potential employer. Uh, that being said, you can also go in the other direction and you do not need to include it if you don't want to. Um, you can just put on Smith and, and start there. So it really, it really depends. And I'm happy to talk a little bit more about the pros and cons of, of putting that on. Um, and we can talk individually about that later. Um, and I hope that answered your question. Okay, so moving on to um, experience. So the name of this individuals section is related experience. Um, what's most important to showcase on your resume um, are the top experiences you want the employer to see. Therefore, you might have a class project and your, the first thing after education might be project experience or research experience. Um, if that's what's most important for the employer to see, go ahead and do that. A lot of students say, what? I can put a class project on my resume? And absolutely. Um, there's a lot of interesting projects that you're doing in labs and design clinics. Even a research paper that you did in a small team or individually can be very much in line with a position you're applying for. If you're applying for a position that involves a lot of leadership, it might be an athletic, um, your first experience might be as uh, the captain of, a, of the tennis team or an athletic team on campus. So you get to choose how you want to highlight your experience. And then in these bullet points under your experience, you will highlight transferable skills. And those are skills that you can bring to the position in which you are applying that were honed in this, in this role. So what I love about resumes is, is that sometimes your experience can't change, but the way you talk about the transferable skills within that experience can be tweaked depending on the role that you are applying to. So I know that's a mouthful. So again, I want to I want to pause for a minute before I go on to the next section and and see if anyone has any questions. 
while we're waiting too, Patty, can I jump in and make, make one note here about Please. This? So the second bullet point here, I think is really interesting for, for people to know where it uh, delivered 10% increase from previous year. Anytime when you can describe an experience and if there's some, some way you can quantify a change or the scope or the scale, how many, how often, those kinds of things, I think that can be really um, useful for your readers who may have no direct familiarity with the organization or with the work that you did. There's something very concrete and easily understandable about numbers. Um, of course, not everything lends itself to quantification, so don't force it if it doesn't make sense. Um, but something, uh, you know, something like this example of delivered a, an increase of a certain percentage can really catch the attention of readers and um, you know, it, it's, it's focusing uh, or drawing attention not just to what you did, but the impact or the effect that it had. So if you have situations through your experiences, through, um, through the types of things that you're capturing in bullet points, if you can find some way to quantify it in a way that makes sense, sometimes that can be really helpful for clarification and for your readers. I love that. Thank you. Good stuff. And for those of you who are starting to think, this is kind of a side note, for those of you who are starting to think, I'm not sure I have a lot of experience. You de definitely have experience. Um, there's a lot of things that you're involved in um, that got you into Smith. And then now that you're at Smith with um, the class projects, and things that you're doing um, in organizations and volunteer work and everything. There's, there's definitely plenty. Okay, so moving on to the skills section. Um, again, here are a variety of uh, skills that may be relevant to any given job. Um, computer skills, technical skills, social media, languages, and then other skills. No one is going to have all of these skills on their resume because you are going to highlight the skills that are relevant to the job that you are applying for. Um, so Jason and I were actually just having this conversation yesterday about the computer skills. Do people still need to write Microsoft Office or Microsoft applications on their resume? And the answer is that we both agreed upon is if the job description or internship description has stated that they're looking for someone who um, is competent with Excel and PowerPoint and Word, if the employer made the effort to put in their job description that they're seeking people with those skills, go ahead and put it on your resume. Um, if not, that particular um, kind of skills that you would be assumed to know as a college student can be removed. Other skills, if you're applying to public relations or marketing or advertising, those uh, sales, they might be specifically look for people with Instagram and Facebook. So when, when relevant, those things can come into play. And even potentially a job might say, we're looking for someone with a driver's license. And then under other, you might put in driver's license or CPR. So the bottom of the page here is just a uh, snapshot from one person's skills section on their resume. And as you can see, they highlighted technical skills such as AutoCAD and others that are clearly specific to a particular position. I will say if you have other, any other language skills, and it's not asking for that in a, in a job description, always put it in. Knowing another language is always going to set you apart uh, in a great way from other candidates. So some best practices or simple tips uh, to keep in mind that the majority of employers find helpful are to keep your resume one page unless you are in STEM fields or uh, potentially applying to academic graduate programs that might require a little bit longer of a resume, we can talk to you um, a little bit later about those particular fields. But by and large, it's gonna be a one-page resume that's 
consistent, organized, easy to read, uh, suggested font size is typically around 10 or 11 and margins are 0.5 to, to one inch. Um, people uh, that have said, what about references? Don't worry about that on a resume. If things go well uh, in an interview and they find you uh, an appealing candidate, they will then ask you for your references. So no need to put references on a resume or at this stage, um, an objective statement is not needed. Um, we'll be able to uh, talk a little bit about why you're applying in your cover letter. So now here's a little snapshot that might be um, a little difficult for some of you to read based on the screen that you have. We do have sample resumes on the Lazarus Center website under our handouts and resources section. And you can go to sample resumes for um, STEM, computer science, um, general resumes, resumes for athletes, and resumes for non-traditional students. But here you see um, the sample student Kyle Layton sort of putting together their resume with their uh, contact information, education and skills, experience in which they chose to highlight their research experience first, additional experience, and activities and interests. Um, let me pause there before we jump into bullet points and um, I know this is a lot, uh, and I, I no question is a silly question. Um, so feel free to stop me at any point, and that includes you, Jason, as well. If anything you want to elaborate on, feel free. Okay. So how to write a bullet point. So I, I typically, Think that this is the most challenging that I've heard, challenging parts parts of a resume that I've heard from from students. Um, and the the biggest thing I would love students to to know about is that here's where you're not just talking about what you did in that role, a job duty, but you really want to look at the job description and say what is this particular job or internship that I'm applying to, what are they looking for? And did I do that in my particular role that I'm about to talk about? And how can I highlight my bullet points um, to focus on that skill? So first you want to choose a skill or quality that you want to show that you want to showcase from the job description. And then you want to ask yourself, um, four questions, and we call this the STAR method. Um, the STAR method is asking yourself, what was the situation, task, action, and result that I took? And this is, um, you can break this out into multiple bullet points. And this is the STAR method will help you to create more impactful descriptions for each of your experiences on your resume. So um, you look and see from the job description that they're looking for someone who can brainstorm. Then you ask yourself, okay, what was the situation, problem, or conflict that I, um, that I was facing in my most, intern most recent experience that had to do with brainstorming? And what responsibility did I take? Um, what action did I take? And what was the result? Um, and try to try to focus on this skill that the employer is looking for. So I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. Hopefully this will help that that um, that idea settle in. So let's pretend I just found an awesome internship that I want to apply for. And I'm reading through the internship description. And it says that they're looking for someone with, amongst other things, creative thinking, uh, organizational skills, and the ability to work independently. Then I want to ask myself, okay, in one of my past positions, how have I done this? And I might say, okay, as a summer receptionist in a dental office, I recognize that there need to be 
that there was a need for a new employee employee manual. And my task was to help new employees uh, learn the system fast, uh, learn the system faster. So that's why I, I create, I wanted to create a manual. So what was the action I took? I initiated, wrote, and edited this first manual, spelling mistake here, I apologize, I'll, I'll update that, for this dentist office. And guess what? It, it was helpful and it's in the onboarding process and the, the manual is actually being used right now. So that would be a great um, bullet point to, to use on a resume and let me kind of uh, whittle that down to be short, succinct, and a little bit more powerful. So the, the final statement after going through the STAR approach would be initiated, wrote, and edited the first training manual for dental company's reception team, which assisted with the onboarding uh, of, uh, um, sorry, my chat box is in the way, but onboarding and resulted in less administrative errors and is still in use today. So um, you kind of get to kind of, I want to sort of walk you through uh, the long-winded approach of writing the bullet point because I think it's super important to understand because this is where the meat is in your, in your um, resume is in the, in these bullet points and targeting them with your experiences, but also speaking to what the employer is looking for. And like I said, if the employer was looking for a totally different skill set, leadership, then you might say, okay, I can't change my past experience. I was a summer reception staff at Quinn Family Dental, but you know what? Once I did take a leadership role and then you would walk through the STAR format again to come up with a different bullet point that highlights the leadership skill and put it in here. Um, does that make sense? Um, and if it doesn't, is there anything I could elaborate on um, to, to help, help that resonate with you? And I see someone has to, has to jump off the call and thanks for being here and definitely schedule another appointment with one of us to, to chat more. Um, any questions or comments? about the bullet point. Okay, well, we'll jump ahead. So this is just one last example I wanted to share with you. Um, this is just a random bullet point on a resume. This individual worked at Ms. Magazine as a social media intern. And their bullet point is helps with social media. This is an example of a bullet point that kind of goes to waste because we don't necessarily know what that individual did. We have some ideas, but it's not super clear. And in this example, we can see that she walked through the STAR approach and came up with a little bit more um, content and meat to, to share with the employer that shows that she added value. And to Jason's point, um, she quantified that experience. So um, just reviewing um, a little bit on a resume, um, we want to make sure that it's, uh, upon final glance, easy to read um, and that your bullet points are tailored uh, and that it's fairly well organized under clear sections. So after, a res after writing an initial resume draft, you can ask yourself these questions to get a sense of if your resume is on the right track. So before we jump into cover letters, I uh, wanna take a breather and answer your specific questions. Jason, I know you have a lot of questions. No? Okay. Breezing right no through questions. this. I no will questions. say maybe at the, by the end of um, this workshop or by the end of today, you'll have a interest section that says, 
mountain climbing or apple picking. That might be something that you'll be adding to your resume. Patty, <laughs> Patty what, how, do you, how do you advise people on using color in a resume? Ooh, I love that. It kind of goes with the theme of this slide too. So traditional, I, I would say know your audience. So if you're applying to more traditional fields, um, a, a classic black and white resume is sort of par for the course. Um, and um, I, would, I would stay traditional in, in looking at the company's websites. Um, business, check out oftentimes a, a company or business or firm that you want to apply for might even have some sample resumes on their website. Um, and you can go off the, the, the samples that they're giving. However, if you're applying to more creative fields, uh, arts, museums, advertising, PR, some nonprofits, and you've looked at the company website and you followed them on social media and this is their, their vibe, it has more creativity to it, by all means, um, use color, but let's not have it be the overwhelming feature so that the, the viewer of your resume is more captivated by your colors than your actual experience on your resume. Anything you want to add to that, Jason? Mm -hmm. uh, no, that's great. I, I think it's a great segue to, to a question that just came in, though. Of, do, you, do you think it's worth it to invest in a pre-made fancy resume layout? Mm. My, um, my advice on that, which I think um, others, uh, other career advisors would agree with me on, is that res uh, templates are very difficult to update and manipulate mold as you move along with your career trajectory. And a resume is a working document always. You're constantly shifting it for different roles and you're constantly growing as a professional. So you're adding different experiences. And when you have a template, it can be very difficult to um, manipulate, add on to, um, and, and further create. So that's why I, I, I would say, I would err on the side of not using a template for that reason. I, I would just add, add a little bit more to a lot of recruiters have reported to us they can they can spot template based resumes from a mile away um, because it sort of seems like a lot of the same ones keep showing up mm. uh, i think there are some really visually striking um, designs that are out there um, and if there's something out there that you see and you find it inspiring and it's a design that you, you that matches with your aesthetic and again matches with your audience perhaps you take that as inspiration and maybe rebuild from, from scratch um, something that it uses some similar design components to it, but, but build it based on your content. I've certainly seen people, and I, Patty, I think maybe this is uh, related to your point of um, sometimes templates force people to put content in, in an order, in a structure that doesn't really make sense, right? The, the structure should serve the content, not the other way around. And sometimes that's the challenge with, with templates as well. So use them as guides, use them as, you know, for, for visual inspiration again, if, if that is workable for you. But do be, be cautious about just plugging in text into a template. In the long run, it may actually lead to taking more time and more energy um, for your document. So moving on to cover letters. So why are cover letters important to submit in addition to your resume? Why can't we just submit a resume and have it be done with? Would anyone like to take themselves off mute and share their ideas on why cover letters? I know, I know, it's hard. Why? Why do we need these cover letters? Well, I will tell you, um, I love cover letters because they are the, remember I said earlier, the, the resume is the who. Who are you? Where did you go to school? What are your experiences? 
But if an employer gets that, they're not gonna, they might say, wow, this is a really interesting candidate, great skills, but why do they wanna work here? So the resume is the who and the cover letter is the why, and it can talk a little bit more uh, about your interest in wanting to use those amazing, interesting, transferable skills on your resume at X corporation. So uh, the cover letter uh, has several purposes, but most important, it's to describe how your, your skills and experience relate to the employer's needs. And then it's uh, to demonstrate your enthusiasm for the particular job or the organization. And also will really show your, uh, your writing skills, which is needed, your, your writing skills are always going to be um, needed in any role that you apply to. Um, a successful co cover letter will really demonstrate that you know the position you're applying for. Um, in a cover letter, it's a great opportunity to mention if you spoke to an alum or a recruiter at maybe one of our upcoming virtual career fairs that you might attend and you might have a lovely conversation with a recruiter or a hiring manager and then you decide to apply to a position at one of their companies and you want to write in your cover letter that this is one of the reasons that you're applying is that you had such um, an enjoyable conversation with one of their recruiters. So the cover letter can really uh, highlight how you've uh, been researching and following their organization. Um, and then the, uh, once again, the goal is to have you called in for, or these days, um, virtually uh, connect with an employer for a interview. So um, I believe it was Marley who asked in the beginning, okay, what is the structure? What's the cover letter look like? Um, essentially, it's going to be one page, not over one page, and typically three or four paragraphs, again, with the same look of your resume in terms of the size of font and margins. Uh, we like to have you have the same header on both your resume and your cover letter to brand the documents similarly. And then, of course, to edit so that um, there's no errors and that you don't accidentally have one dear hiring manager from one particular company up top. And then at, at the bottom, you say, and I'm looking forward to working for and then have a totally different company name at the end. We want to avoid that. Um, and so this is um, a, again, um, small layout that you can pull up on our website, but a cover letter is a business letter that typically includes these sections. And um, a lot of people will ask, what if I don't have the individual's name that I'm uh, writing to? Uh, dear hiring manager is, will suffice for sure. Um, the introduction, uh, in, a, in a minute, we're gonna, we're gonna kind of go through each of these sections, but you typically will have an introduction paragraph, a couple of um, meaty bullet points that are specific to your experience and how they relate to the job, uh, finishing up with why you're excited about that employer and signing off. So um, the typical framework in terms of the first paragraph, um, this is where you're going to identify the role that you are seeking to in introduce your skills and you as a current or recent Smith College graduate. Uh, and we have this lovely cover letter format layout on our website, which really talks that uh, this, this worksheet is live on our, our, on our website to remind you what information sort of can go in what paragraph. You're going to make this your own, but this is sort of your standard skeleton base cover letter. Um, and then the body paragraphs here are going to provide more depth to a selected experience from your resume. Uh, that demonstrates an, an experience that you have that shows the employer that you have the interest or um, have honed some of the skills to apply to their position. 
And then the closing paragraph typically will re reiterate your personal interest in that organization. And this is where you highlight that you know the organization. This isn't a blanket cover letter that is going to every single advertising firm or consulting firm out there. We want to make your cover letter uh, resonate with the employer that it's being sent to. So what I typically see is students at some point in their cover letter, oftentimes in the closing, saying, I would really love to work for you, X company, because of your um, amazing reputation and solid um, diversity efforts. Well, many employers have a great reputation and mission statement um, that are similar to these values. And so that, that's very general sort of across the board. So if you can pull out something and you happen to know that this company that you're applying to has a um, women's program, like where they have, uh, they partner uh, C-suite executives with entry level um, employees, or um, they have um, some sort of networking events every month, or they even have a softball team and you can speak to just the fun that that company has. That's gonna show them that you've gone the extra mile and you know why you want to work for them. Okay, so again, um, this introductory paragraph is gonna be brief and identify why you are writing the cover letter. So you could say how you found it, maybe on Handshake, maybe through a networking event, maybe through um, LinkedIn or a, a, a another um, website. Um, you are going to all in the first paragraph say something that makes them want to keep on reading and, and mentioning that you are uh, a Smith student or a recent grad because that's definitely something we wanna put out there in the first paragraph that's, that's gonna be um, exciting and, and unique um, for the employer to read that's gonna set you apart. The body of the, uh, the body paragraphs um, are usually two to three pages. And um, we really want you to check out the uh, job posting to identify clues to determine what the employer is looking for. Um, and then you're gonna provide depth to those selected experiences from your resume that showcase the skills related to the position that you're applying for. Um, so try not to repeat exactly what is on your resume, but rather explain um, your resume or a particular experience in, in, in a different way that, that you feel like is really going to connect quickly with that employer. And then a uh, closing paragraph is to reiterate your interest in that role and position, really why them, getting back to what you know about them. And, um, and thanking them for taking the time to review your, your documents. So um, relevance is key. Uh, point out the, you know, what you really don't assume that the employer is gonna read in between the lines and understand how your liberal, liberal arts background will make you a better problem solver or communicator or what have you. Even though it's, we know that this is the case, you might need to point that out and give a specific example and remind them of this. Also personalize your cover letter when a recruiter, a hiring manager is looking at your documents. Remember they're spending maybe seven seconds on a resume. Um, they have a lot of applicants and a lot of cover letters will start to blend in the more kind of generic they are. So if there's something that you can pull out, maybe you are on the ultimate Frisbee team at Smith and that really um, helped bode your communication skills or your confidence in conjunction with a class that you were taking at Smith, 
maybe there's something fun there, interesting there that you could talk about that connection to being on um, this club sport and this class and how it's influenced you applying to this, this organization. So, um, you know, do, do personalize it so that they're, they're having fun, uh, at least not falling asleep when you're, when they're reading your, your cover letter. And remember, you can be a strong applicant, even if you don't meet every single um, criteria in the job description, okay? Um, people wanna hire people. And so if you're really hungry for that job and you don't have the qualifications that someone else has, but you have that passion and interest and grittiness to be that person who's gonna work hard and um, go the extra mile, that, that says a lot. Okay, so final checks before sending in your resume and cover letter. Obviously, we want to eliminate those errors, have a second set of eyes on your documents. I know after um, I'm reading something for a long time, I can't, I can't see what I'm looking at anymore. Um, and the other thing is to really remind yourself if, if and when you, knock on wood, get that call or email for an interview, go back and look at the cover letter and resume that you submit because it's open game for a conversation. So if all of a sudden you did decide to put an interest section and it says apple picking or mountain climbing, be prepared to, for them to say, oh, where do you like to go um, mountain climbing? And it, because anything on your resume is something that they could ask you about. And if you're tweaking your resume, which you should do for different positions, you might have said different things that you wanna remember um, to be able to, to talk about. Um, and then we do get, a, I just included this because we do get a lot of questions about how do I, if it's an email, um, how do I attach my resume and cover letter? What should that look like? And we suggest saving um, your resume and cover letter as PDFs and naming them as such down here and submitting them that way. Um, and then for anyone who's planning on going to the virtual career fairs happening uh, later this semester and the next semester, we would encourage you to definitely have your profile and handshake viewable and your resume uploaded in handshake and viewable to employers.